Nothing's gone wrong with them. Great. Just a few hairs dropped by people who've leaned over them. It's like a kind of souvenir they've left for me. How are you going about making a series of in-memoriam boxes for children of various ages who were buried around the year 1000 in one burial site all together? Should you approach it personally? And how should you respond to death, particularly in the case of young children? To begin with, I've partly been inspired by the idea that it concerns an archaeological dig in this case, and that the remains take us back to a period that makes it very difficult for us to imagine the circumstances in which the people lived at the time. For this reason, I've considered death as being something timeless. I've looked at the various symbols that are used in different cultures for their burial ceremonies. And in the context of my own thematic, it's logical to apply the concept of the mirror. Especially when I read that mirrors have always been very important burial gifts. Now we may look upon the mirror mainly as a cosmetic tool, but that was definitely not the case in the past. For example, Mirrors were used for predicting the future. They played a role in various religions and beliefs. They were a magical attribute for looking into people's souls. You often discover in myths that people look upon death as a transitional journey into another world and existence. And thus I decided to make a box with paddles because I felt that ultimately you're lonely on your way out. You have all these great rituals performed for you, but as soon as you're in this box, it's up to you alone. So I thought a pair of pedals might come in handy. I didn't want to look upon death as something serious and tragic only. In fact, I always try my work to have a humorous side as well. For instance, I've made use of part of a wooden hat block, which gives you some suggestion of a human face, with a large lens as a kind of eye. And you also see next to it a kind of weird cat of nine tails, a wooden stick with leather strips to whip someone with. And at the same time, it's something you can associate with a scepter which makes the figure in the box into a kind of royal figure. I chose a different theme again for another box. Among all the things I've collected over the years for future works, I had this beautiful big horn. And I was reminded of Bach's music. The horn is meant to represent the marvelous sound of his music reaching up to the heavens. I made the horn rise out of the box because the sound should reach up into the sky. In this box, the human figure is itself not present, but the environment, the religious context, has been suggested as glittering with chandeliers, with impressive wooden choir benches that you find in old churches. These were the associations that made me create this particular box. In the third box, I've used the idea of small pitter-pat feet. For this, I've made use of wooden shoe molds that used to be used for modeling leather shoes. I've put them on the outside of the box as little feet that walk into the box from outside. And inside the box they dance up and down as a kind of dance macabre. Next the little feet dance out of the top of the box again. This also stands for the cycle of life and death. At the same time you can also associate this with the cycle of nature, which is also something positive. It's not only decay and loss, it's also new life that comes into being thanks to the decay of other things. 
In all three boxes, I've tried to respect the idea of death and transition, and to link respect to something lovable, something beyond mere sadness, something which on a much larger scale is the most universal theme we are confronted with in our life. And at the same time, it's the greatest mystery of them all. Mystery has a lot to do with art, and as an artist, you're not always responsible for solving this mystery. The mystery of the burial of 153 children in the church in Fries will never be solved, and perhaps this is only for the better. Perhaps this whole exhibition, with its 153 tributes to these unknown children, would be less moving if we knew the reason of them having been buried here. So I think that the fact that as an artist you can visualize this mystery and breathe new life into it, may itself be a wonderful tribute to death in all its aspects. <laughs>